habit of uh, spending a lot of money on very heavy engineering, especially in terms of coastal protection with embankments and revetments. Uh, but I think uh, perhaps if we may be able to explore more lighter engineering and perhaps more biological engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, um, reefs have always been a protect protection for the islands. Um, and if we could see and understand how we may be able to grow reefs, how we may be ab able to save them, and, and you know, mm. very many biological means of adaptation. Uh, also, uh, recently, at least in our country, we've, we've experienced uh, a rapid increase in malaria mm. and other vector-borne diseases. Mm. Uh, we haven't been able to uh, combat malaria as it was, and suddenly mosquitoes have adapted, yeah. while we haven't. Mm. Um, and, and so therefore, if we can also understand other health issues arising from climate change. Mm. I think, um, and also, uh, uh, in, in my mind, um, adaptation is not necessarily just simply revetments and heavy engineering. Uh, but good governance stands at the heart of better adaptation. Um, if we are to channel va vast amounts of funds through uh, dictatorships and single party apparatus, uh, this is, uh, in my mind, is going to be fairly wasteful. Uh, so uh, we should try and become more democratic. We should be more consultative in matters. We should be speaking to people, uh, collective bargaining, and all the other issues to do with labor. And um, uh, uh, I believe that um, try and understanding, uh, uh, try to understand how um, governance would assist adaptation is a, a, an avenue that we should explore. I think that's an extremely important point and it doesn't come out enough, the importance of governance and of the priorities within countries and of ensuring that the more vulnerable within countries um, are given the priority that they need, um, especially if they're coping with climate change shocks. Um, you know, it's great to hear you um, with your own vision and with your leadership of the Alliance of uh, Small Island States. Uh, what can a broad movement, because there is a broad movement really building around the ideas of jobs, justice, climate, and um, the need for all of us to get engaged. We heard from young people, we heard some climate witnesses, we've heard from the union movement, we've heard from a um, uh, representative of the United States government, Dr. Pershing, and um, I think, you know, your message about how this movement could help where you are now and the smaller countries um, that are vulnerable and that need uh, to have their case highlighted. Would you like to give a message? Um, to this very receptive audience? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, um, believe me, politicians would never do anything unless it has some link to votes. Um, and therefore, um, you know, I'm one of them. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, you're, not, you're not just an optimist, you're a realist. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, uh, 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 leaders really don't think at all. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, no, we, we, they have their thinking done by the people and therefore uh, grassroots activism is so important to move leaders. Maldives President Mohamed Nasheed in conversation with the former President of Ireland and former UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Mary Robinson. President Nasheed and his cabinet held a meeting underwater to dramatize climate change this weekend. That does it for our show. Our website, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.